Water, where you need it, when you need it, and in an economical and environmentally responsible manner. Good afternoon. I'm Jack Critchfield, Chairman of the Board of Florida Progress Corporation. On behalf of Florida Progress and Progress Energy Ionics, the team for the desalination project, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present our proposal to help resolve a matter that is of critical importance to you, to our company, and to all of the people who live and work in Tampa Bay. A reliable and drought-proof water supply is the key to the well-being of any area. We have seen that this is particularly true here in the Tampa Bay area. We have enjoyed a rich history of strong economic development, but to ensure continued growth and vitality, we must nurture, protect, and enhance the many factors that make our area attractive to so many people and businesses. Of those factors, in my opinion, none are as basic or more important than water. What we plan to tell you today is how our team can reliably deliver a supply of desalinated water to the Tampa Bay area where you need it, when you need it, and in an economically and environmentally responsible manner. We have selected our team to bring the best possible offer to Tampa Bay Water. Our partner, Ionix, is a world-class water technology supplier, system integrator, and operator with over 2,000 desalination plants to its credit worldwide. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Arthur Goldstein, Chairman and CEO of Ionix, who will tell you more about Ionix experience and capabilities and speak about the other key team members. Thank you, Jack. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be joining Dr. Critchfield and other members of the Progress Energy Ionics team to discuss the proposal we have jointly submitted. This year, Ionics celebrates 50 years of achievement in the water business. As Jack Critchfield noted, during that time, Ionics has built over 2,000 desalination plants in 62 countries. This represents more plants than any company in the world and more than our next three competitors combined. We have invested over $200 million of our own capital in successful build, own, and operate projects all around the world, including a 7 million gallon per day facility for the city of Santa Barbara in California, which represented the largest seawater desalination plant in the United States at the time it was built. We believe the PEC Ionics team offers more experience owning and operating municipal desalination plants than any other bidder. Our proposal provides two desalination alternatives, the Higgins site on Tampa Bay and the Antclote site on the Gulf of Mexico. Both alternatives are the two lowest cost offers that you have received. We have done the evaluations to demonstrate that both sites are permittable. However, we are aware of the growing concern in the last two months of the cumulative impact on Tampa Bay of the several alternative water supply projects. Our proposal offers to Tampa Bay Water an off-the-bay desalination facility at Antclote. We believe your selection of the Antclote desalination facility will allow Tampa Bay Water to move forward with an off-the-bay project which will reduce public concern. Taking desalination facilities off the bay ensures the option of Tampa Bay Water to consider alternative water sources such as the reservoir. This team has worked well together to prepare a proposal which, as Jack said, will provide water to Tampa Bay water where it is needed and when it is needed in an economical and environmentally responsible manner. We look forward to the opportunity of serving you.
Today, we will discuss our proposed desal at the Anclote and Higgins site, provide a summary of our presentation, and then respond to your questions. For the Anclote site, we will explain our financial and commercial offerings, siting and technical elements, water delivery and quality factors, permitting and environmental requirements. We believe you will conclude this option will provide you with desal water where you need it, when you need it, and in an economical and environmentally responsible manner. We begin with our financial and commercial offering at Anclote. The PEC Ionics proposal offers the lowest cost options to you. The Anclote facility offers the lowest cost of the off-the-bay alternatives. The cost of water produced at Anclote and delivered to Keller Water Treatment Plant is $2.49 at a 20 million gallon per day contract amount and $2.32 at a 23 million gallon per day contract amount. The 23 MGD option is a more cost-effective water supply because it represents the optimal design size for our system components. For water produced at Anclote and delivered to Keller, our prices of $2.49 and $2.32 are 27 cents and 44 cents less than the next ranked competitor. Your life cycle cost analysis expressed as the net present value, NPV, of the delivered water over the life of the contract shows PEC Ionics to be the lowest cost offer with a net present value of $361 million at the 20 MGD contract amount. This represents savings over the life of the contract of $48 million to $65 million when compared to our competitors. Your evaluation and ranking in March of 1998 stated the following, quote, the NPV of the Progress Energy Partnership Anclode Power Station site, while some $30 million higher than the Higgins site, is also regarded as significantly less than the NPV of other submissions received, end of quote. We confirm that our delivered water costs quoted in our offering are bid prices valid through November 20th, 1998. Our costs are made up of two basic components, fixed costs and variable costs. Our construction, financing, capital recovery and return on investment are fixed costs. The variable costs are power and taxes, which are pass-through costs, and labor and consumables, which are index costs using the agreed to consumer price index. We are guaranteeing power consumption and membrane replacement rates, which represent approximately 40% of the variable costs. PEC is a wholly owned subsidiary of Florida Progress Corporation, which is a New York stock exchange company with some $5 billion in assets and some $3 billion in annual revenues. Ionix is also a New York Stock Exchange company with over $400 million in assets and annual revenues of $350 million. PEC Ionix will provide 20% of the capital requirements as equity. The debt component of the financing is structured as long-term fixed-rate debt to minimize the cost of water today and for the next 30 years. Today's interest rates are favorable and still reflect the assumptions made in our proposal. One of the major advantages of the PEC Ionics proposed projects is that they provide you with a ready-to-use system without the need for construction of additional infrastructure. Our proposal provides for the desal plant and the necessary transmission pipeline to Keller where you can blend the desalinated water with well waters. We have a proposed 30-month implementation schedule, which includes nine months of permitting. We believe that this schedule is realistic at Anclote, and if needed, we could potentially accelerate the effort. Our offer provides for a minimum of a 30% discount for water delivered above the contracted amount. In addition, our offer is flexible regarding the disposition transfer of the facility after the contract period. We have also provided for a water bank concept, which has the potential for reducing the unit cost of water. Our offer includes proposals for equitable risk sharing consistent with the needs of Tampa Bay water.
Our next topic is siting and technical elements at Anclote. Desalting plants require appropriate site selection. They require seafront access for intake and discharge facilities. The site must be open and accessible for the new construction and operation. It should be close to the potable water distribution system and areas of water demand. The plant construction and operation should have minimal impact on the surroundings and should be consistent with land use plans. The Anclode power station site is suited for the desalting plant. The seawater intake and discharge exist and have the necessary environmental permits. The site has ample space for initial and future construction. Desalted water from a plant at Anclote will be delivered to the Keller Water Treatment Plant via a pipeline located in existing electric power transmission line corridors. Anclote exists as a heavy industrial site approved by the Pasco County Planning Commission as a public utility in conformance with the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan. PEC Ionics will use part of the site for the desalination plant. The site has all necessary utilities available, which makes the desalting plant operation independent of the Anclote power station. Briefly stated, the proposed plant requires an intake for seawater supply, a pretreatment system for removing suspended solids, RO membrane elements, high pressure feed pumps, energy recovery turbines, and product water delivery pumps. RO concentrate is returned to the canal and solids are removed for approved disposal on land. The key to optimum RO membrane performance is a high quality pretreatment system. Our knowledge of intake conditions at Anclote and our emphasis on reliable operation led us to a pretreatment system with a feed reservoir, solids removal clarifiers, and two stages of media filtration followed by cartridge filtration. The desalting plant design is distinguished by extremely efficient use of electric power. The high pressure pumps consume approximately 60% of all of the energy used. They are selected for maximum efficiency. Each pump has an energy recovery turbine that recovers 35% of the energy. Our low energy usage, 12 kilowatt hours per 1,000 gallons of water produced, is unmatched by other proposals. Following startup and commissioning of the desalination plant, a performance test will be carried out to confirm the design performance. This test protocol will be approved by the staff of Tampa Bay Water to meet their requirements. We'll now discuss water quality and delivery factors at ANCLO. Our proposal includes the facilities to deliver desalted water to the Keller Water Treatment Plant via a new pipeline co-located in an existing power line corridor. The well water now provided from Keller will be blended with the desalted water for immediate use and immediate relief of well field pumping. It is important to note that all costs for delivering the desalted water to Keller and blending with well water are included in the PEC Ionics proposal. The partially stabilized desalted water from Anclote is blended at Keller with groundwater to effect complete product water stabilization. This minimizes the increase in total dissolved solids in the distributed water. Additionally, the use and handling of hundreds of tons of chemicals is avoided. The blended water quality is superior to potable water quality standards. Sodium and chloride are constituents of particular interest to the water consumer. The sodium and chloride content of the blended water provided by the PEC Ionics Anclote desalting plant is lower than that of the product of any of the other proposals submitted for your consideration. There are additional water quality benefits from our proposed project. Keller will distribute water with improved hardness, reduced to less than one half of the present amount. Moreover, this lower hardness will allow improved control of copper and lead corrosion that now occurs in the distribution system. Trihalomethanes, compounds associated with chlorination of certain waters, are currently of concern in Keller's distribution system. Desalted water has essentially zero THMs, so the blend of desalted and Keller water will immediately reduce THMs in the system. All of these additional benefits accrue without additional cost to Tampa Bay Water.
We'll turn now to permitting requirements. The PEC Ionics team brings extensive permitting experience, specifically related to the kinds of issues that are present with this project. Our team understands local and state regulations and the environmental issues that are part of projects like this. Our projects have required analysis of discharge characteristics and compliance with water quality standards. We have the necessary experience and information to complete the permitting process successfully and efficiently. The desalination project will require permits from many agencies. Here is a list of the agencies who will need to review the applications and or issue permits. The facility will be thoroughly scrutinized for potential environmental impacts. Other issues to be reviewed will include zoning requirements and all construction codes and standards. We will be consistent with the local land use plans in Pasco and Pinellas counties. Local concerns will be addressed throughout the permitting and project development process. The steps for ensuring that local concerns are met include, first, identification of key stakeholders, second, education, third, a process that provides for input and meaningful participation by all concerned, and fourth, resolution of issues raised. The outcome will be acceptable results. The proposed ANCLOTE desalination project is readily permittable. The project team has worked with local and state agencies to ensure our understanding of permitting requirements. Based on this understanding of the project and the environment where it will be located, there will be no significant negative impacts. The concentrate discharge permit is the key environmental permit. We have performed most of the analyses that will be required. The ANCLOTE facility provides the opportunity to dilute concentrate discharge in the existing flow through the ANCLOTE canal. This is a private canal and is non-jurisdictional water. The actual discharge into Florida waters occurs near the mouth of the discharge canal where it flows into the Gulf of Mexico. The concentrate will be well diluted and mixed at this point. No new NPDES permit will be required. Rather, a modification of the current permit will be obtained. Given the previous studies and modeling work showing that all water quality standards to protect aquatic life will be met, this permitting process will be straightforward. The timeline included with our proposal includes a realistic permitting schedule. We have allowed nine months to complete permitting of the facility. We will now review the environmental issues associated with the siting of a desal facility at Anclote. The construction and operation of a seawater desalination facility could potentially impact a number of environmental parameters, depending on its location and design. These potential environmental concerns would include impacts related to concentrate discharge, marine habitat, wetlands, endangered species, thermal impacts, air quality, noise, chemical use, and energy use. The proposed desalination facility at Anclote has been sited and designed to prevent or minimize impacts in all of these areas. The concentrate discharge system at the Anclote facility will not cause harm to the marine environment. Bioassay studies were performed in 1995 to evaluate potential impacts related to RO concentrate from the Anclote site. The results endorsed by DEP found no impacts to the test organisms under planned discharge conditions. The existing flow in the Anclote Canal will dilute the concentrate prior to its discharge to Florida waters where the canal enters the Gulf of Mexico. The dilution provided by the flow through the canal, even under conditions where the power plant is not operating, far exceeds the dilution requirements indicated as needed by the earlier studies. Once the diluted concentrate reaches the Gulf of Mexico, further mixing and dispersion in the sea will ensure no long-term buildup of salinity. The results of the bioassay studies, as well as computer modeling studies indicating rapid dispersion, are supported by field studies of marine environments in the vicinity of desalination facilities operating elsewhere. 
The existing seawater intake at Anklot is one of several features of the desalination project which provide environmental advantages to our proposal. Use of seawater for the plant eliminates any potential impact to the local groundwater resources or surface features. In addition, because the pumps and intake structures at the Enclote power station are more than adequate for our needs, construction in the marine environment is eliminated. Citing considerations for the Anclote project minimize potential impacts to wetlands and endangered species. The desalination facility will be located on an upland site at the Anclote power station. The product water pipeline will be co-located for most of its length in FPC power line corridors. These areas have been disturbed previously and are readily accessible. Initial studies have indicated no impacts to endangered species from operations of the desal plant or the pipeline construction. The seawater RO desalination plant proposed at Anclote will not require an air emissions permit. The RO process itself does not create any direct air emissions. The electric power will be provided from the already approved and permitted reserve capacity of the Florida Public Utility Power Grid. The desalination plant will be independent of the operations of the Anclote power plant. All of the other environmental issues identified previously have been addressed through the design of the Anclote facility. Noise impacts are rendered insignificant due to the location of the facility on an industrial site, away from sensitive receptors, and shielding where necessary near site boundaries or near workstations. Reverse osmosis is not a thermal process and does not create heated effluent or emissions. Chemicals used at the facility for pretreatment or cleaning are all approved for use in potable water treatment plants. Energy use is minimized through state-of-the-art energy recovery equipment. Our proposed desalination facility at Anclote offers notable environmental advantages over all other proposals. The entire desalination element of the West Coast Master Water Plan is designed to allow protection and restoration of heavily used groundwater resources. The Anclote facility will provide protection and will not result in groundwater withdrawals. The site is located on the Gulf of Mexico rather than Tampa Bay. Public concern and uncertainty over potential cumulative impacts to the bay are reduced by location of a desalination plant at Anclote. The Anclote project is located at the site used for the concentrate studies endorsed by DEP, who acknowledged the permittability of desalination under existing water quality standards. The Anclote plant will be located at an existing industrial facility, ensuring compatibility for the proposed use. And finally, existing structures for the key intake and discharge processes eliminate the need for construction in the marine environment, along with related environmental and permitting concerns. Next, we will briefly discuss the Higgins site. Most of the topics at Higgins are similar to those at Anclote, so we will discuss only those elements which differ significantly between the two sites. The general permitting requirements, the financing approach, the application of efficient technology, the product water quality, and the terms of a water purchase agreement are almost identical for Higgins to those presented for Anclote. The items that differentiate the Higgins offer from the Anclote offer are the price, the raw water quality, the delivery location, and the public concern regarding the cumulative impacts on the Bay of multiple water supply projects under consideration by Tampa Bay Water. The total water costs at Higgins are the lowest of all offerers. At a 23 MGD contract amount, the cost is $2.12 per 1,000 gallons. The salinity in northern Old Tampa Bay is lower than that at Anclote. This is significant because less energy is required to desalt lower TDS water and less equipment is required. In addition, the water quality in terms of suspended matter is seen to be better at Higgins than at Anclote, thus reducing the pretreatment equipment required. These two technical factors reduce the unit water cost at the Higgins facility below that of Anclote. 
Our proposal presents the delivery point of desal water produced at Higgins at the Cosme Water Treatment Plant. Delivery at this point provides the opportunity to blend water from wells and the desal water to produce a water of quality similar to that currently produced at Cosme, without the need for softening. This would result in savings that are not factored into our price, but which offer an additional financial benefit to you. We are aware of the growing concern of the cumulative impact on Tampa Bay of the several alternative water supply projects which are being considered. We have not evaluated the cumulative effect of these projects, but have evaluated the impact of our Higgins project alone on current Bay water quality. Our analysis shows that the predicted salinity increase north of the Courtney Campbell Causeway is small, equalizes within six months, and is much less than the natural background variation in Old Tampa Bay. Increases of this order of magnitude will have no negative impact on the aquatic environment. The difference between the Higgins site on the bay and the Anclote site off the bay is the issue of public concern for bay water quality. This is an issue that you can best assess. That concludes our discussion of the Higgins facility. We offer this summary and then a few words from Dr. Critchfield. Our team is financially strong and has experience in over 2,000 desal facilities worldwide. Our financial offer, as evaluated by your consultant and staff, is the lowest cost among the competitors, and it is based on assumptions we are willing to commit to today. We offer technology that is reliable, proven, energy efficient, has a long life, and is designed for site-specific conditions. Our offer provides for complete treatment, transmission, and blending of the desal water with your well waters to ensure consistent water of high quality at all times. Our proposed facilities are permittable and create no significant environmental impacts. The PEC Ionics team looks forward to working with you to reliably deliver water where you need it, when you need it, in an economical and environmentally responsible manner. We want to be part of the solution. Water, where you need it, when you need it, and in an economical and environmentally responsible manner.